My name is Gabriel Silva. I speak some languages. Today, I'm gonna talk about Duolingo once again. And I've made a couple of videos about Duolingo before. Like I said before, I do like Duolingo. I've used it for several languages. And uh, today, I'm gonna talk about whether it's a waste of time or not. Just because recently I have heard some people say, you know what, Duolingo is just a waste of time. You're just not gonna learn the language with it that you're trying to learn. So I, you know, I disagree and I'm gonna talk about some of the pros and cons in this video. And I'm gonna make my argument as to why I think that is, that a Duolingo is actually somewhat useful. You know, like any tool, like any specific tool, it has its limitations. We're not going to become fluent using any one single program or tool. That's just a fact. We have to accept that. And uh, But I think that Duolingo can be an interesting tool, especially at the beginning. And sometimes even to review a language, like I did with German and French. But I'm going to get started with some arguments against using Duolingo, okay? So, first of all, could you be using your time more effectively? And a lot of people would say, yes, you could be using other things for learning a language that are going to be more effective, that are going to teach you more vocabulary, or you're going to be able to absorb the language in a more effective way if you use these other tools. Okay? And, uh, and I think, yeah, well, it depends really on your level. If you're at a very basic level, and you use a very effective but advanced tool, I would argue that, you know, it may not be a great idea. But if you have some exposure to uh, an easier, more user-friendly tool, then it may be better first, and then later you can use more effective tools. One criticism that I do have uh, against Duolingo, but many other programs and, and apps as well, is that you know, I, li I like to prioritize my language learning, okay? So, usually, I don't like to learn about, for example, colors or, I don't know, like items of within your household or clothes and animals until later in the game. You know why? Just because, of course, eventually, I want to learn these things. But they're not my priority. I like to prioritize and I want to learn vocabulary that will be really useful to me in conversation. And those things that I mentioned are usually not going to come up very frequently in my conversations, okay? So, for example, let's say that instead, though, let's say that I were, I don't know, if I were really into fashion, then if that were the case, and, and if I were really into fashion, I think that uh, I would focus on clothing, clothing items right away, okay? And Duolingo, like many other programs, they have these things early on. You have to learn them to, to uh, progress throughout the, throughout the language in, on Duolingo, okay? I understand that you're being exposed to the language and you're building sentences using this vocab and learning the language that way. But I just happen to think that you can master those things by prioritizing and learning what you really want to learn when you get started with learning a language. Another disadvantage that I see is the little point system. You, you lose you basically uh, lose health. Actually, this has changed a couple of times because I've been using it for a couple of years. And uh, right now, essentially, what happens is that you lose health. And then if you lose all your health, then you have to buy more with points. And if you run out of points, you have to wait until the next day. I mean, it's not a big deal. But often when I get things wrong, I just want to throw my phone right out the window or smash it with a hammer. Maybe it's just me, but I get stressed. I guess nobody likes making mistakes. On the other hand, the point system makes it kind of fun because it's kind of like a game, right? I get it. Another con is that there's just not enough listening. Okay, so in order for you to develop good uh, understanding and also for you to develop good pronunciation in the language that you're trying to learn, you got to do a fair amount of listening. And Duolingo doesn't really offer that a lot. So, like I said before, of course, Duolingo is just one tool and you have to complement it with different things. One of these things, of course, has to be some listening. And, like I always say, especially with text and audio. So, if you have the text and the audio, you can listen and you can read. And if you don't understand, you can go to the text and study it. And also, if you don't review Duolingo or if you don't have 
knowledge of, or if you're not using memorization techniques, Duolingo doesn't really offer a lot of that. So unless you go and review it on your own and redo all the little lessons, you're not really getting any effective way of remembering and learning these things. Now let's talk about the pros. First of all, like I mentioned before, it's kind of fun. Okay, so it's just, it's convenient. It's easy to use. You just have it on your phone or on your computer and you can just do it uh, anytime. If you're very busy, perhaps you can do it at a coffee shop as you're waiting in line, waiting for your coffee. Uh, maybe you can do it during lunch, at your work, whatever. Also, it helps you gain control over sentence structure through practice, which is a good thing. It teaches you some vocab. Do learn vocabulary. Like I said before, often it's not vocabulary that I'm really uh, eager to learn. And I would rather learn other stuff first, but it's still okay. You're still learning new vocabulary. Also, it's kind of addictive. I constantly want to do it because I want to keep my streak going. And also because I'm kind of competitive. If I have friends, I just want to crush them uh, on Duolingo by, you know, uh, using a lot more and getting a lot more points or whatever. Another pro is that if you're getting started, I think it's a fun way to just do it, okay? And get your feet wet, which I find really, really important when you're excited about the language, uh, when you start learning it. So you can just grab your phone, you can do it, it's kind of enjoyable, it's kind of fun, like I said. Another really important thing is that you learn vocabulary in context, which is super important. Uh, you know, I've learned a lot of vocab without context before, like just flashcards with, uh, with no sentences. And then I realized that that's, to me at least, that's not nearly as effective as learning words in context. And most important of all, if you like it, if you do enjoy using Duolingo, go for it. I don't think it's a waste of time. I think, in fact, you're going to learn a lot. But like I said before, it can't be the only tool. If you're serious about learning a language, you can get started with Duolingo, but complement it with different things. And if you like this video, check out my other videos. In one of them, I talk about strategies uh, on how to turbo your Duolingo so you can learn faster. And, uh, and that's it. And good luck, my friends, learning a new language.